Good afternoon. Um, I'm going to uh, start the Northampton License Commission meeting for January 3rd, 2019. Um, commissioners that are present, Brian Campanelli, Helen Kahn, Nasha, or Natasha Yagalov is absent. Um, order, I just want to announce that the audio video recording is on. And at this time, we'll take any public comment. Seeing none, we're going to move on to uh, our first item, application for short-term liquor licenses. Uh, trustees of Forbes Library, DBA, Forbes, Li Forbes Library. Place would be at Forbes Library, 20 West Street, Wine and Malt. Request fee waiver. Date and times, January 26, 2019, 2 to 4. The events at gallery reception with Amanda, uh, yeah, Makibo, and Colleen, uh, Date and time February 6, 2019, 5.30 to 7.30. On the reception with Sarah Cars Reed, Bob Pelletier, and Ted Malik. Also uh, March 2nd, 2019, 2 to 4. Gallery reception, Emily Torelli, Bobby Senate, Lou Pio. And it looks like we have everything set. Can you state your name for the record, please? Faith Kaufman, I'm the Arts and Music Library in the Forbes Library. How are you? Uh, good. Excellent. It's a nice run on the hill. Mm. <laughs> yeah, you made it. Um, so nothing different than usual? No. Okay. Wine and cheese and snacks and seltzer and right. the usual. Okay. Do you have any? Um, yeah, I guess on the application that um, you don't have anyone listed as an alcohol distributor, it just says to be determined, is that something? Right, we used to use, I don't know what they call it, Yankee, Yankee Distribution, mm -hmm. and they stopped um, covering Western Mass, and we're looking for one that does at this point, because... So maybe Williams or Commercial? I don't know who's on the list. The thing is that the state, you know, it has a list of oh, approved right. vendors, and Lisa Downing was going through trying to find someone else that was local. But okay. they tend to want to sell much larger quantities, but mostly the problem is that they're not local. Right. And they, so we, we, um, we don't know who we've got at this point. Do uh, caterers qualify? I don't know. I don't know anything about the alcohol distribution. Yeah, but, uh, right. but how about the small breweries? They can't do that. Well, we don't know if beer really won't wine. Pardon me? Yeah. We want wine, though. Not yeah, beer. well, I was going to suggest either winery, local wineries. I don't know if they have that kind of jurisdiction. You know, if they, they make their own, like. Are we allowed to get it from, like, State Street? Or I have no owners? idea, but. I would check into that. Yeah, not State Street. No, it would have to be like, um, I'm guessing, I'm not quite sure. You have to look at this, but maybe like um, Glendale Ridge or Black Birch or somebody that actually this wholesale makes it. And they might have to work the event, right? Like they do a chamber events. And they have to purchase it. Forbes would have to purchase it. Do you have the list of the licensed distributors? I don't have the current list. I have a previous list. Okay, I can send you a list. That would be great. Yeah, absolutely. Great. So, um, maybe we should just it's gonna make it contingent on them. Wow. Just to get it approved. It's gonna happen. I mean, so at this point, this is something that when you find out who the distributor is, she can give us that information. Yeah, yeah. yeah just reach yeah. out to Annie. Yeah. So. Yeah, so I'd say, yeah, once you have someone, then, okay. you know, just sort of complete the application by sending that information. Okay. Yeah, you have plenty of time. We'll just go ahead and go to yeah. put that through then, you know. So, do you want me to? If you'd like to make a motion. Sure, I will make a motion to um, approve the applications for the short-term liquor licenses for Forbes Library, DBA Forbes Library, um, on the specified <coughs> dates for the events listed on the agenda, um, contingent upon you know, getting a, distrib uh, a distributor and sending that information into our okay. The second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take a while. Number 
for application for transfer of common big license and transfer of entertainment license from MP Majestic Enterprise LLC DBA Majestic Saloon 24 Main Street. Formerly uh, Nolan LLC DBA The Foundry. Proposed manager is Michael Proziak. Uh, hey, how you doing, Ryan? I hope I pronounced that right. Terrible with names. Um, Me too. Proposed entertainment, live acoustic, amplified music, DJ, karaoke, comedy, spoken word performances, hours of entertainment, Sunday through Wednesday, 4 p.m. to midnight, Thursday through Saturday, 4 p.m. to 1 a.m. Can you state your name for the record, please? Michael J. Crozier. All right. How are you? I'm well. How are you guys doing? Good, good. Yeah, happy New Year. Yeah, same to you. Um, so, tell us about this a little bit. So it's going to be basically, I don't know if you're familiar with the Foundry used to do prior to us, just uh, jazz, um, maybe acoustic bands. It's not going to be any major rock bands. The space is very tiny. Right. So it's going to be very simplified. Um, yeah, pretty simple stuff. Okay. All right. Nothing um, too loud or anything like that. Yeah, so the building commissioner's office wanted to have us inform you that because of the sprinkler system or the lack thereof, I think you're limited to 49 people in this space. We, we had got that memo. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, any plans to uh, rectify the you know, to give us sprinkler system? Not that it's, I mean, it's possible. I We haven't really talked about that. Yeah. I mean, okay. it's a pretty expensive. We're going to start making yes. some money before we do something like that. I hear you. And if we owned a building, that would be probably a definite. Right. Uh, so, that's so we're just trying to get our foot in the door here, start making some money. Um, like I said, it's going to be really simple acoustic guitar, little right. jazz things. I don't plan on people lined up outside down no, the street. Yeah. Not at this point. Not yet, right? Not yet. <laughs> um, so, and is this the, with the transfer of the license, is everything else? Is the hours of entertainment, is all that the same, or has that changed? Um, the hours of entertainment is, uh, well, we have four to one o'clock, and I think, was it six to one, maybe? It's, we just put that on there because we don't know exactly. Somewhere in those ranges we're gonna have, it might be seven to one, seven to 12. It might not even have music on Tuesdays or Mondays. We're just trying to cover our bases just in case. So, anyway, like, so has it changed from like, are the, I guess, are those details different than they were under that? I think they're pretty the much the same, I think, as what they had before. Types of entertainment? Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Are there any uh, future immediate plans of actually expanding or? The only thing we're doing is trying to access the back bathroom to make two bathrooms instead of just one. Um, so there's two bathrooms there, one for the customers, one for the employees, and we're trying to make it accessible for everybody to use both the bathrooms. That's the only thing we're doing construction wise. Where's the other bathroom? Right in the back of the kitchen, like behind the uh, customer one. Uh -huh. So we're trying to do like a hallway in between the small kitchen and the uh, existing bathroom. Huh.
Hi, how are you? Can you state your name for the record? Oh, she said me. Oh, okay. How do you spell that? Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, I got you. I was looking at the so other you're end. the manager? Oh, you're proposed manager. I got you. Thank you. I'll catch up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, you've already opened, huh? Yes. Okay. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Um, how's it going for you? Pretty good. Excellent. Okay. Um, so, we just need to approve this license for our common victim. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that sounds like there's a lot of enthusiasm for your for your restaurant. <laughs> um, yeah. And is this just something that fell through the cracks that you weren't aware of that you needed to apply for this license? Mm -hmm. when, or, um, I think she um, thought she was all set when she got the health department license. Oh, okay. yeah. and, I, and I don't think anyone from health told her that she needed to check her out and go to other departments. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. It is complicated. There's a lot of licenses <laughs> when you open the restaurant. I will make a motion to approve the application for the common victual owner license for Zaps Ramen, Inc., DBA Yokohama Ramen, at AB Main Street. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Thank Set. you. <laughs> Take care. Okay. Number six, application for short term liquor licenses, Click Workspace. It's place Click Workspace, 9 half Market Street, Wine and Malt. Date and time. January 25th, 2019, 7 to 9 p.m., events and music performance. Uh, the next date is February 15, 2019, 7 to 9 p.m., music performance. And then February 23rd, 2019, 5.30, 10 p.m., spoken word, <coughs> album, album release event. Hi, can you state your name for the record, please? Hi, my name is Catherine Ayuchi. I'm the member advocate over at Click. Okay. Thanks for coming. Yeah. So, um, can you tell us a little bit about this, please? Sure. So, um, the first two applications are for um, our music series that we do every winter and spring, um, Click Music. And basically, we just have, we set up um, kind of a lineup of local bands to Western Mass, kind of the Northampton, greater Northampton area, um, to come and perform. and. Yeah, we just have our traditional setup that we have for um, all of our events, which is um, the bar setup in the middle of the first, the main floor there. Um, it doesn't go into any of the other floors quick, it's just the ground floor. Um, and the musical performances are set up, and then we have a table for seltzer, snacks, stuff like that. Just okay. finger foods. Great. Yeah. That answered the question you have, or that I have. Do you have any other questions? Yeah, what's the spoken word album release event? Just so, <laughs> um, a local writer, Nicole Young, um, she actually recorded the spoken word album at Click as well. Um, yep, and we had she had a performance at Click last year. Um, so we have kind of a little history of um, working on this with her, and her album release party is ready. So she wants to have it at Click. Yeah. Cool. All right. Cool. Sounds great. So go ahead and make a motion to approve the short-term liquor licenses for Click Workspace <coughs> at um, Click Workspace, Nine and Half Market Street, on the dates and for the events listed in the agenda. I will second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, thank you very much. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. Take care. Number seven. Update on 2019 license renewals. First, is Spoleto Inc. Okay. Um, so, <clears throat> just going to notify you of these issues in case you need to take further action. Um, so, Spoleto Pizzeria Paradiso, they have not passed inspe inspection yet. They've been sent their temporary certificate um, that will expire January 31st, and so will their license. Um, VFW. So, sorry, just to move mm -hmm. not passing inspection means that. Health department has been out there and they didn't pass, or they haven't had a chance to go out there and inspect. Building and fire building went and out fire. there and they didn't pass. Oh. So the building department issues temporary certificates through the end of January. Mm -hmm. uh, he's made it clear that he will not be issuing additional certificates, so they must um, fix these issues before that of the month. You know what kind of 
Massachusetts? Um, no, he doesn't elaborate, right. but I know when we went through the license removals in November, he said the biggest issue was a hood not being clean. Um, so, for example, Taipei Tokyo has not passed inspection and they just needed a certain battery for a <coughs> for the alarm or fire extinguisher or something up there. Yeah, something up there. So they're all minor issues. He did say a few of them seem to be dragging their feet. Um, others are on top of it. So they've been sent a letter um, or with their with their temporary certificate, they've been sent a letter letting them know that they need to get this done before the end of the month. Okay, great. Um, so VFW, they haven't passed inspection. Uh, Taipei Tokyo, they haven't either. World War II Club, they have not passed inspection and they have also not returned mandatory with liability and workers' comp insurance. So they haven't even been sent a temporary certificate. So they are operating without a license. I've contacted them. I so should we just have the police seize it? <coughs> well, we don't have a license to seize. Oh. I mean, their license expired December 31st. True enough. So what is our course of action then? I, I, I mean, people just ignore it the law know. and just and go for it. I mean, the president is Steve Connor, who is our director of veteran services. I saw him today. I asked him, and he, and he just said, I'll get it to you, and I heard that. Okay, so all politics aside, what's our next? I mean, you know, it is what it is. Just because he works or does whatever oh, else no, within the city, you're breaking the law. I mean, you can't do it. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what it is. Last year was my first year, and everyone passed by the end of the year. Yeah. And everyone had all their people. So it's the first for all of us. So it's the first. Hmm. So. I think one more reach out to him and then tell him that we need to contact the ABCC and ask their advice on his current situation. Okay. I mean, I mean yeah. Do you agree? Well, you it does seem like something needs to be done. I mean, you know, with that. I mean, obviously, CD, this is through last one. Clearly, if, if you've reached out so many times and there's not enough respect for, you know, the current, you know, our, I don't know if you call us our board or commission or whatnot, then. Let's go to the state level and let them handle it. Yeah. And just let them know it's in the public record now that you know the commission would like to uh, move this forward to the next level if it doesn't. I mean, how hard can it be? I mean, be they're not in compliance with the law. That's, that's the bottom point. line because I don't know what section of Mass Transit Law 138 is, but it, they, it's mandatory with liability insurance with renewal that's due in November. Right. Um, that's one, and then the, I mean, just operating without a license is the other. Mm -hmm. well, I'd say that the ABCC would think that's pretty serious violations, wouldn't you? Yeah. I mean, they don't, they don't have a liquor license right now. That's they don't point. serving people down there that, that that's illegal. That's right. <coughs> Do you feel uncomfortable reaching out? No. Oh, okay. No, no, not at all. All right. So, if you want to just do it in a, a letter, I mean, or... To the World War II Club? Yeah, to, I mean, you've called how many times and talked to them, and now you, you know, you yeah, need to share a... Definitely the person. So maybe issue a registered letter on behalf of the commission that yeah. um, states, if not by a certain date, and we can pick the date, I mean, you know, by January, well, immediately for the labor Immediate. light, yeah. immediately. Yeah. There's, you can't wait a month. It's illegal as it is. So. Yeah. <coughs> okay. I was, yeah. I was, I, I was thinking that we should probably send letters to everyone that hasn't renewed because there's others which we haven't got to yet. But um, that's the only, that's not the only worker actually. So mm -hmm. which we'll keep going. Um, the Smithsonian, they returned their paperwork today. They have one. So they're good They're good, yeah. Lime Red Tea House, right before I came over to the meeting, he came in to get his paperwork that he said he never received. So he's going to be, hopefully, said he's going to be back tomorrow to return everything. Okay. Um, Bully Service Center, they have not returned their paperwork. They also owe back taxes, so I'm assuming that's one of the reasons. 
Um, and that's for what? A, a, a class two class party two. license. Okay. And same thing with uh, where I learned a affordable use cars. They have not returned the paperwork. They also owe back taxes. Um, so they are both operating on the license. Ask, what is the difference between them and 1812, which came before us for back taxes? Is it just that it hasn't gotten to the extent? Yeah, they don't have payment that? agreements with the tax collector. Okay. So if you get over a certain amount that you owe, you have to sit down and make a payment agreement mm -hmm. to pay a certain amount, however many times a month to become current. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, they haven't, they haven't reached that point yet. And um, Lion, DBA, Jim's Variety, they have returned all their, they have returned their paperwork except for their mandatory workers' comp and proof of insurance. So they have not received a liquor license either. I've called every day. He tells me he's going to do it. A few days, he hasn't been there. He's serving. They're selling. Not they're selling, attention. not yeah. serving. They're section and he doesn't serving. have a license currently because of that. No, he has no license. Same thing, that registered yeah. letter um, immediately, or you know, I don't know if ABCC or who you get involved to come in and shut down the, the premises. I'm but thinking PD. The police would shut yeah. it down and say you're not allowed to operate. Yeah. Okay. And then the um, street in, um, they haven't sent their renewal paperwork either. I've left messages for her. Today I called, went straight to voicemail. I don't so I say that they have to act immediately, and if we don't hear from uh, them within five business days, then the PD will be notified, and the ABCC, and we'll shut them out because it's illegal. Yeah. So uh, we can only call the ABCC on liquor. Uh, Elm Street Inn okay. is a lodging or an inn holder, and then Class Two is just our local. Yeah, license. they're just local. Yeah, well, PD can go and. Um, you don't have a list of all the auctions around, do you? Uh, car dealer auctions? Yeah, because the, the best way to get to the, these people to comply is to call Southern Auto Auction and all the other ones and send letters and say, this person has no license. So and then they get shut down. They yeah. can't buy. Um, I mean, Southern Auto Auctions calls a lot to make sure that certain dealers have valid licenses. Mm -hmm. Well, there's Southern, there's one near Southern, and one the down ones yeah, there as well. there's two that call, yeah. at least two. And then there's online auctions, like Copart, mm -hmm. and I can give you a list, because I have a class two license, so I do a lot of that, but I can give you a list of, uh, you know, who you'd reach out to and say, by the way, you know, yeah. if we have to. Okay. Because um, that's the quickest way to get these people to comply. Right. No, you no, know, no, if yeah. we send a registered letter and say that we're going to blanket email, you know, every uh, auctioneer in the tri-state area that you no longer have a license. I mean, I don't even know, we should talk to Seawall, I don't know if that's legal, but, right. okay. you know, but you have to report when they call for sure. Right, when they call, I can verbally yeah. tell them they don't have a license. That's right. So, okay. Okay, so, Boletto, or Pizzeria Paradiso, DFW, Taipei, Tokyo, those three, I won't send a letter because this they just need to. Um, they're they're trying. They're trying, yeah. and they'll get a reinspection. Okay. Um, so I will send a letter to World War II Club and Jim's Variety, mm -hmm. and why the tea house is coming back tomorrow, and then I will uh, the class two auto dealers. Um, What do you want? Yeah, send a letter to them. Okay, right. telling them basically the same thing as... If they don't comply, they'll be shut down. Okay. I would, I would just, just um, for due diligence reasons, call Chief um, what Casper and ask if that's within their authority. I, I believe it is. Yeah, there are agents of the commission. Yeah. So. I just want to make sure that we're not overstepping on that. Some other agency is not supposed to handle it. Like I don't know. Like 
for instance, class two license, when I, I received mine, the state police came and inspected my facility to approve it. Yeah. I wonder if they do the same in Hampton. Because so, I don't know if any inspections happening with these car dealers. Like there's in East Hampton there they make you have a shop with lifts and everything. You have you can't just open up a grassy lot on the side of Route Ten and call it a car dealer. Like the so one who in police Route Ten. Um the state police. So how come they wouldn't do the same for North Hampton if they do that for East Hampton? I mean we can check. Yeah, it's, it's. I think it's part of the state thing. You know what I mean? Just tell them state police will be notified. And well, I don't know. I would maybe talk to the state police and say, you know, can you tell me? Do you have anything? And ask it what they do for jurisdiction over class two, you know, dealer licenses for car dealers. To you know, say in the stamp that I was told <clears throat> that you go and you actually have to inspect the facility. So they do send a state police officer there. Mm -hmm. So, I think maybe it's just town by town. Yeah, but state poli police is in town. If it was the, if it was town by town, then East Hampton PD would be inspecting, not state police. No, well, then maybe, yeah, you're right. So maybe it's mandated by the state and they're supposed to do it. And have we ever followed through on that? And we don't know, because have we set up any new car dealerships except for the one that... We have on Damon Road. Right, and they may have had inspections because they're so big. Yeah, anyway. I'm thinking maybe when they, because they have to get their license to the RMV, mm -hmm. so maybe that's how it triggers state police to inspect. I don't know, but I would like to know. Yeah. So, so with these letters, are we saying that they respond to the states and send them? Well, they need to respond immediately. Yeah. And if they don't respond and nothing's, and they don't, I think if they're not in compliance within five days, we'll shut them down until they become uh, compliant. Five business days is reasonable, being that you're illegally operating your business. Yeah, and they've had notice since November. Since November. Right. And I've spoken to every one of them personally, yeah. verbally, not messages, spoken to them, and they've all said that, oh, I'll be yeah. tomorrow. Yeah, well, I'm surprised they didn't take that so lightly, especially with the licenses. Right. Um, so, I don't know, to get serious. Sort of related to this, or under the business, um, the, speaking of 1812, if like, they have a big RV behind their facility that says for sale, and does that mean that they're in violation? It depends they, if they're selling it privately, because their yard is their back. Okay. Like their residence is behind. Right. So if it's in that, I mean, if it's on their commercial property, maybe not so much legal, but. I mean, just because it's those driving, I didn't like take, you know, get out, look around, but it just as I'm driving by. It's right. Like, so there's two. Me. There's a class two on that property for um, Jeremy Pease, mm -hmm. which is um, I think a son maybe, and let's see. Jeremy Pease Florence Auto Sales, and it's on the same property. Oh, okay. And so he has a class two for buying and selling used vehicles, but the 1812 was a class three for junk. Was oh, is okay. the RV a junk? Oh, no, I'm, yeah, maybe it was just a He might be selling it under the other license. I mean, they're covered. They're going to use his son's license or whatever to cover themselves, I'm sure. If that's still in good standing. Well, 1812 isn't covered under the class two license. No, I understand that. But okay. I'm guessing what they're going to do is say, no, no, my son's selling that. We are not. 1812 is not. Oh. Yeah, not junk, but it's just a, I mean, right. it's used. Junk is usually, you don't put junk out for sale, you scrap it. Okay. You know, you, you can go and you can buy it at the, like Copart is a damaged auction, so everything that comes through is with a salvage title, you know, so you can either, you buy that generally for parts okay. as a so class three. So that's what they're interested in. They're going to buy a junk car, get the parts they need and fix Mr. Jones's car, right. mm -hmm. you know what I mean, as a savings instead of buying from Plum or Napa or whoever. Right. So, so that's the only thing I can see that would make sense why you would want a class three uh, as a body dealer. So, all right, are we are we good on seven? Um, on the update? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to move on to eight. So discussion of procedure for determining fair wage bond amounts. 
Um, so in recent, um, um, uh, uh, call it a re uh, the reach out, you know, when, when they came before us here and his attorney, and I forget the guy's name, uh, not Seawall, our attorney, but the oh, other um, attorney. Show. So Schimmel, I mean, to me, made a fair argument on, you know, that I thought it was logical that everybody to that point, you know, when Sewell represented and said, hey, how about we do triple damages on what they do? Well, each person's violation was like 1500 or 2400 So when you had to get a bond, you were talking a $6,000 bond at 3%. Well, this guy's was fifty or 60000 for um, Osaka which puts them into a hundred and fifty or hundred and eighty thousand dollar range. Um, which when I brought up to see well, I said, well, I just thought that was kind of, I think we need to revisit this and come up with a different situation um, and go with maybe percentages. That's what Seawall and I were talking about. And he said he was down for talking about that and you know, coming out and, and seeing what to do. And that way there for next year's renewal of their bond, like everyone has to pay for the triple damages this year, even them, even Osaka. Mm -hmm. So if it's 5,000 or whatnot, they, they have to do it because that's what we set. But it's also within our jurisdiction to revisit that and go off of a percentage mm -hmm. if we want versus a three times. You get what I'm saying? So it just seems like it's more in line. So yeah, it's $60,000 violation. But to my point to Seawald was, wasn't there already a wall, you know what I mean, of protection? In other words, did Osaka pay their fine? He said, yes. I said, so the state's already got something set up to go after and get those those funds for us to set such a high situation. You know, I can never see anybody going to 150000 You know, I mean, especially, and I know they're not going to do it again, I would assume. Yeah, I don't know, but you would have to be... Uh, very brazen to try that again. <laughs> you know what I mean? After paying sixty thousand, so their point is that now they're going to pay fifteen thousand on top of that for the three years. And it's not that I'm trying to figure out anything more than just what makes sense. It's you know what I mean? It doesn't. And even you know, I want to say Attorney Seawald agreed with me to the point where a fifteen hundred dollar fine. Now you're, you, you know what I mean? You're having a, uh, a $4,500 bond, mm -hmm. which that's, you know, $120, right. you know, so yeah. at 3%. And I'm guessing that's, I, I don't know if it's truly 3% or what it is that they pay. But. So anyway, that's the point of it. And if we want to somehow reach out to him and ask what's a good time uh, at, before their renewals of the bonds, which are all the same or different? So they're supposed to get that bond in place before the end of this month, right? That's yes. So, so we need to reach out and tell them <coughs> it stands the way it is this year. I'll skip to number 10, new business. <laughs> okay. okay. They, um, Mark from Osaka brought in their wage bond yesterday, came, came through. So okay. um, they have their annual license, they're all set, we're just waiting on Oriental Teas, which is odd because theirs was just a renewal. Um, I did get a message from Val at Whalen who handles both bonds, and she said that both outstanding bonds are being processed at the company, and we're hoping to get them next week. This was yesterday. So yeah. that was that was at the, in the morning, and Osaka had come in. So hopefully the other one is on its way. Right. Okay. Okay. So essentially, you're saying before next year. <laughs> before next. To, before next to year. Visit the issue to see if they can, can yeah. change. Yeah. I would say it would have to be at least a month prior to the first one's renewal. So I'm not sure that all. You know, I don't think they all renew on the same day because everybody got theirs differently. Yeah, they all got them at the end of the year. So, oh, so they do really want the same. So it's all on an annual basis, right? Like yes. They have to do it before the okay. next yeah. year. So if we do it a month prior or yes. two months Maybe prior. Maybe in the summer. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. And then we, you know, just to have a and we revisit that. Okay. Yeah. And maybe just when we create that agenda, throw some notes in there. 
so that we remember what we're talking about okay. now, like going on a percentage versus um, so on and so forth. All right, um, approval of minutes, December 5th. We can't do that because Natasha is not here. Sure. And, yeah, so we have to table that. And uh, December 17th, you and I, did you, are you good with those? Yes, I am. I am as well, so if you want to make a motion. Make a motion to approve the minutes of December 17th, 2018. I second that. All in favor? Aye. All right. And any new business? Um, what we just talked about. Just discussed. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you very much.